This is amazing. I wish we could prolong this conversation, but it's about time to transition to the next one. Daniel Badley, welcome to the show. Cybersecurity Simplified. What a transition. Everybody, How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How's everybody else here doing today? We're super excited to talk about cyber threat. All right. Let me uh, let me share my screen. Uh, see if I can do that. All right, perfect. Uh, just giving everybody a heads up here today, it's going to be hard to get everything in here into a, a 15 minute window. So I would highly encourage anybody that's interested to reach out to our website at bestdefense.io to be able to schedule a demo, to be able to speak with our sales engineers, to be able to get some further insights into the platform. Um, today, we're going to be focusing on uh, AI from a productivity standpoint for cybersecurity, be able to help you understand and ensure that your roadmaps are in place, as well as making sure that you're, you're maintaining your federal compliance and things like that. So here at Best Defense, uh, you know, we are a cybersecurity company, uh, SaaS platform, uh, designed around chaos engineering principles, which really just means that our system was designed to be able to give you confidence in your production environment under turbulent conditions. The whole point of this system um, is, is catered around uh, three main verticals that we have with AI woven into all of the different layers. And that is um, chaos, infrastructure, network application, resiliency testing. So distributed load testing at global scales, uh, automated red team capabilities. So proactive penetration assessments that can be merged directly into your change control processes to be able to give you faster insights into any vulnerabilities that might be emerging through your SDLC process or through your code pipelines. Um, to be able to push the responsibility back to the development teams making those changes in the first place before they make it actually out into the wild, right? So being able to actually stop that stuff further upstream, um, you know, before even QA gets involved. Um, and we also have advanced uh, network monitoring capabilities. So the idea is that through our novel non-invasive approach, unlike traditional situations where you might have to install agents on endpoints and things like that, um, that don't also really provide you with OT capabilities because of that, um, our system using network mirroring techniques is actually able to analyze and do deep packet analysis on everything going over your network without wasting compute resources uh, on existing machines or wasting too much of your network bandwidth. Um, and then the idea with the AI solution CISO that we developed trained on over 9 billion data points for cybersecurity is that through all of the different layers of your stack, whether it's for infrastructural resiliency, scalability, whether it's for your security or whether it's just the monitoring for your business to ensure you know, what's going on with bad actors, that you can get actionable insights in real time uh, to be able to actually have your remediation teams be as informed as possible, as well as your first response teams if an event happens for your business. Um, the biggest uh, problems that we've seen from talking to our clients today, honestly, really just come down to three main things. It's the fact that cybersecurity generally is a fractured marketplace the high barrier to entry is mostly around costs and the fact that most of the applications and systems that exist out there aren't really that easy to integrate, especially not in an automated way. And most of them, even if they do have those capabilities, don't like really communicating with each other. So you're having to build these custom solutions around that to aggregate that telemetry to be able to actually do something with that. We are here to eliminate all of those problems to be able to provide high quality services at the lowest landed cost. So moving directly into our system, um, from a high level overview, uh, when you come in, you'll be able to onboard as many different devices as you want. We connect to your uh, remote cloud environments, uh, Azure, AWS, GCP, all of your LANs. You can onboard domains if you want to do web application testing. You can bridge your networks, you'll monitor your remote servers, your local desktops. You'll see dashboards similar to this, right? It's meant to be an easy report card for you to understand what you're looking at. Um, and you'll see what you know your risk levels are and how they are over time. Uh, jumping straight into how would you actually go about, you know, adding devices? Well, it's fairly simple. So once you come to, you know, your network screens, or you can go do through simple DNS text record verification, you can actually come in, uh, and we give you everything you need to generate, you know, IAM roles. If you're doing a, a bridge to like an AWS account, to be able to create those VPC connections, so that you can automatically index and catalog all the different servers in your remote environments, right, which may even be ephemeral, right? So you don't have to constantly reload and re-add things over and over again. You just kind of want a one-click solution to be able to start monitoring and running assessments on all of those different devices. Once you've created that network bridge, uh, you'll be able to immediately start uh, seeing different solutions 
I'm sorry, uh, different telemetry uh, going over your network for different events that might have happened. You'll be able to see per region breakdowns. You'll be able to see what CVEs bad actors are actively trying to do to exploit your systems, where they're coming from, who they are. And the idea is that you can integrate this platform into any of your existing scenes to be able to uh, let your first response team know that an event's happening. Because generally, obviously, you only really have five, maybe 10 minutes to be able to actually do something to close that loop before you know a, a serious data breach actually occurs. Um, once you've also bridged your network, you'll also have some essential basic network topography uh, information. We're not doing too much with uh, trying to compete against other providers in this area. It's more of a byproduct for what we're doing to be able to integrate all of the different environments, but we'll be able to show you all the different devices on your network, what their status and health checks are from a security standpoint. We'll be able to show you if there's any devices that are connected to multiple networks, right? Which maybe wasn't intended. You got uh, Bobby over here in IT that had his laptop left in a closet and he didn't realize that he was still VPN to one of your air gapped networks. Uh, and for whatever reason, the device that he's currently got stuff in the closet is public. You know, that could be obviously a huge problem. So. This is going to be able to show you exactly what's going on inside your network. Um, you'll be able to see basic device information of all your different systems. You'll be able to run reports directly from the device itself. You can run reports for your whole network. Um, and it's meant to just be a simple way to be able to say, hey, we need to run an assessment. Give us back everything. Uh, once you've run an assessment, essentially what you'll see is the following. Um, the idea is that you, if you're running a load test, on your VPN, or if you're running a load test on your web application or anything behind that, uh, you'll be able to run as many synthetics as you want. We can go up to billions of different virtual users, uh, unlike most solutions out there, like Microsoft Azure solution. I think it's caps out about a thousand concurrent connections per region, and they're starting at about 50 cents an hour, which is ridiculous, not really that helpful. Uh, we can actually get up into the billions, right? So if you need to be able to protect critical infrastructure, right, like say your defense department, or your large scale financial institution, you need to be able to make sure that a state level actor can't just take your systems completely offline. And that's exactly what we've designed here. Um, it will be able to tell you per region what your health checks are looking like and how your systems were able to scale and actually respond to those assessments. Uh, when you get over to penetration tests and the actual vulnerability metric reports, you'll see something similar to this where once you get that report back for a specific device or for an endpoint, We'll be able to show you all of the different vulnerabilities that uh, were found, which obviously hopefully you see none, but let's say vulnerabilities are found, you'll be able to see um, as much actionable intelligence about it, what endpoint was hit, what the attack vector was, we'll give you the evidence for that attack so that you can actually go back and reproduce it, as well as general information, you know, back to like the MITRE framework website, back to OWASP to be able to learn more information about the specific CWE or CVEs that are associated with that. And then where AI gets involved is the fact that we have our AI CISO integrated into these responses so that it can actually give you step-by-step -step breakdowns into how to actually go about remedying that problem, right? Because most of the time, what you'll get from people is, well, this report is great, but what do I do with it? You know, who do I give this to? And what do we even do to get started? The idea is that the system is actually able to generate out problem overview solutions for you based off of the context of your environment, of your system, what languages you're using. And it's meant to be able to help you get started. Now, let's say that the, the solution here that is provided is not enough, right? And for whatever that's here that doesn't already have a solution built into it, you know, you can always just say, I need some additional help. Um, it will send it back out to the server. We don't have WebRTC connections yet, so what you're basically just waiting for is for it to fully generate out the whole response, so it's not just writing it per character to your screen, and we do a whole flush paint to the browser, as you saw. And you'll be able to see some additional information about that vulnerability and what to do. But let's say, okay, okay, that's great, but I need to talk about this. I don't really understand this, even with the solution that it's giving me. I need some more help. That's where you can engage with the AI CISO. So once you've clicked on a specific target item, whether it's a report, whether it's network monitoring info, whether it's specific vulnerability, you want to come over here to the screen and you want to be able to ask you questions. Well, you're like, well, hey, um, I'm you know, uh, currently in the process of ensuring 
points. How would this ability? I don't know. Map different. And you could say something like, I don't know, like, you know, Fed ramp, CMMT, SOC 2, uh, et cetera. Okay. So let's say you're like, hey, you know, I need to be able to know more about the solution. What, what additional information can you give me about this? And you can speak to pretty much everything that we've gathered from all of the different telemetry inside the system. And we're gonna be doing some additional things here in the future uh, very soon where as these objects are created, we're just gonna go out and immediately start fetching all of that different telemetry and just start embedding it directly on the, on the screen so that you don't have to actually go out and ask these questions in the first place. But it's here for you, right? So you can engage with this as you would expect a normal person uh, to be able to say like, hey, I need some more additional information about this. I need some additional context. Please help me how to resolve. Um, please help me. And you can just continue that conversation. We'll give you direct context links back to, again, you know, uh, the, the MITRE framework and as much information as we possibly can to help enable your teams to be able to solve these problems. But you know, you'll be able to engage with it to be able to help you with those step-by-step -step solutions. You can feed it as much context you want as about your information, uh, about your systems, about the devices, and basically just get as much context as possible. Um, the productivity side of things is, is one of my more favorite sides of this application is, okay, again, you have all this information. What do we do with it? Well, if let's say you're connected to some of your favorite ticket management solutions like Jira, right, or AZ DevOps, it really just depends on what flavor you like the most, but the idea is that you can easily uh, create tickets, add them into your product backlog for your remediation teams to be able to actually go in and do something about that. In the near future, we're actually going to be unveiling here within the next 30 days, which is super awesome, a solution that allows you to essentially have the AI do a holistic overview on the entire report and be able to break it down for you. So like epic level stories, tickets, tasks, subtasks right, and be able to put as much information on all of those tickets as possible so that you can effectively groom them and add complexity and map all of your security controls to that and be able to make it just as easy as possible for you to be able to maintain and understand what your current posture is for your business. And don't forget, all of these scans can be going in real time all the time. So any integrations that you have with your teams, existing alert systems, log ingestion tools, maybe using Splunk, New Relic, CloudWatch, doesn't matter. Uh, we have full API integration capabilities so that you can export all of that telemetry to your to your favorite log ingestion or, or service tools. Um, but the cool part about this system is that as we're wrapping this stuff up over the end of this first, this first quarter, is we're going to be able to get it to the point where as you're communicating with the CISO, you can just simply log in and say, hey, I need to know what the current state of my posture is for my entire business from a global standpoint. I need a roadmap to be able to get all of our different business locations and all of our different buildings or all of our different cloud environments to be able to accomplish X, Y, and Z goal, right? Maybe that's hyper-focusing on FedRAMP, right? Because you're trying to engage with Uncle Sam. And it will be able to lay out all of those different epics for you on your own project board, specifically around that federal compliance, depending on the size of your organization. And the idea is to be able to again, help you with being more proactive for being able to detect vulnerabilities before they get to production. But as they've already gotten to production because things exist and you, know, you have to go and clean that stuff up, how can we make it as easy as possible for businesses to adopt this technology to be able to work it into their teams so that technical debt and security isn't this afterthought, right? It's just as important and as easy to be able to get accomplished as the shiny features coming out of the product roadmap. And that's essentially what we were doing here today. Daniel, this is amazing. Um, just to, I, I, we have a lot of questions that our community submitted. I will make sure to address them on Slack since we're out of time here. Where do our people go? Um, bestdefense.io. Bestdefense.io. Amazing.